DNA is a double-stranded molecule that carries the genetic information for an organism. It consists of a four-letter code where A always pairs with complementary base T and C with G. All of an organism's DNA makes up its genome. We can compare the genomes of different people or organisms by two main methods. In a microarray, short single-stranded DNA sequences called probes are attached to a solid surface. An organism's DNA is fragmented, fluorescently labelled and added to the chip, where it will only stick to probes with a complementary sequence. The fluorescence can then be measured using a scanner. Another popular method is sequencing. There are many variations of sequencing, but they generally involve a polymerase adding a complementary base one at a time. As each base is added, a signal such as fluorescence or light is given off, which can then be picked up by a detector. Whilst DNA acts as a store of genetic information, genes need to be expressed to create the proteins. Gene expression is controlled by several different factors, which make up the epigenome. DNA methylation, for example, prevents transcription. To investigate which genes are methylated, we treat DNA with bisulfite, which converts non-methylated cytosines into uracils. The change in sequence after bisulfite treatment can then be measured by microarray or sequencing. Proteins bound to DNA can also affect expression. To find out where on the genome a particular protein is bound, the protein and DNA are cross-linked and the DNA is chopped up. An antibody specific to the protein is then used to capture the bound DNA fragments, which can once again be measured by microarray or sequencing. Finally, whilst tightly coiled up regions of DNA are less expressed, open regions are more expressed. In a method called ATAC-seq, more accessible regions of the DNA are tagged and then sequenced. If a region of DNA's epigenome is welcoming and a gene is expressed, it will be transcribed into a similar single-stranded molecule, messenger RNA. While an organism's DNA is the same in every cell, levels of each mRNA vary depending on cell and environment. All of the mRNAs expressed from the genes of an organism make up its transcriptome. To measure levels of RNA, it is reverse transcribed back into the more stable DNA, and then it can be sequenced or measured by microarray in the same way as the genome. mRNA is translated into proteins, which perform most of the functions needed for an organism to live. All the proteins produced by a cell or organism are its proteome. Although we can look at the proteome directly by mass spec, for individual cells, up to 40 different proteins can be measured by mass cytometry. Heavy metals are conjugated to antibodies, which bind to specific proteins on the cell. Cells are then vaporised, one by one, and the mass of the attached heavy metals measured by time of flight mass spectrometry. Lighter metal ions have a shorter time of flight, and heavy ions have a longer time of flight. In addition to changing the levels of proteins, different environments can change the levels of metabolites, such as carbohydrates, lipids or amino acids. Once again, mass spec can be used. The great thing about omics is that we don't have to go in with preconceived ideas about how a cell or organism will respond to a change in an environment, such as infection or stress. We just, just measure, measure everything, everything and hope for the, for the best! best. <laughs>